I'm Andy Nidell. And I'm Spartacus Olson. And this is a World War II in real time public service announcement. This has to do with our Pearl Harbor uh, minute by minute coverage, which will come out at, uh, in the morning of December 7th, Hawaiian time uh, this year, <laughs> 1941, 2020, which is also a year of catastrophe if you think about it. Um, but nevertheless, we are historians, so we don't talk about what's going on today. What we're going to talk about is what was going on back then. Because for the last three days, I've been here at the tea house, and Sparty and I have had a workshop to really block out how the actual scripts for this might work. Because since it is minute by minute coverage, certain things have to come at certain minutes and you only have a certain number of words that I or whoever else might be talking it can say in a minute. So you really have, we really have to actually, uh, this is a little bit different. So um, Sparty, why don't you tell us, say a few words and then tell them what they're looking at, right? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, the, this is really a group effort as well. It's really important to understand that. Vike is directing it. It's his first Wait, project that he's insert directing. Insert photo of Vike. Absolutely. That's Vike. <laughs> and Marcus Linke is doing a lot of the, the military history and tech specs. Insert photo of Marcus. There you go. So, okay. uh, and they've done a lot of research already. Like Vike has been looking at the personal stories. Marcus has been looking at the technical parts. Indy's been doing a lot about the diplomatic things. I've been... Not doing anything. <laughs> That's not true. But um, so we had to get all of that come to come together into one synthesis of what was going on. And we started off by like looking at the red lines here, which are the plot points. When does the story turn around in a big way? Uh, and uh, then we started adding all of the different parts. So we added like non-timeline events that we need to cover, characters that need more coverage. Uh, and uh, also looking at the general events that are going through the whole thing that happens through it. So eventually this thing is going to be completely blue because these are just the words that are filling it out because we need 140 words per minute and it has to be completely full. And then, of course, we also, there's a lot of background information here. I think we have like, you know, 40, 50,000 words of research by now. Yeah, which is, uh, uh, which is, more, than we, which is more than we need. Yeah, yeah, a lot yeah, more than is, we need, yeah. yeah. Funny how that works out. Uh, and the thing is, it's all really interesting. I'm like, but what he had for breakfast is really important. <laughs> and I have to take it away. So, yeah. so, okay. so, but we also, what we're then, of course, start looking at is where was everybody? Where, where, where how's the movement going? And like, these maps are just for our memory, but... We're going to do something really, really exciting about the maps. I'm not going to tell you what. You're going to find out, but it is going to be earth-shattering cool. We've also, we've even, we've not just blocking it out, we've come up with different names and themes for the episodes that you can have an under-theme even though you follow, mm -hmm. you know, the regular events. Like episode one is Enter Japan. That makes sense because Japan is there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Genda's plan is episode two. If you know who Genda is, then that makes sense. If you don't, you can look up Genda and then you go, aha, I understand his plan. Uh, episode three, the calm before the storm. That makes sense. The planes have not yet arrived at Pearl Harbor. Oh, planes. Well, it's not only that. I mean, it's a regular Sunday in Pearl Harbor. Nobody expects this is coming. So there, people are just going about their, you know, their work. And there's a lot. And that, like, I mean, there's many exciting stories that we're going to be able to cover that are less known, such as, for instance, our uh, character down here, a young lady, nine years old. There were children involved because there's a little place called Pearl City, and the people lived there, and they were caught in the middle of this. Now, these are the actual, these are the, the characters, although we are going to have a lot of personal recollections because we have time for it. These are the characters we really follow that represent different branches of service and different branches of everyday life. And even just looking at their pictures, you can see that, it doesn't quite look like you imagine it looked like. Like you look at Fushida here. Um, some of you may know who he was. He was a pilot. He was a major pilot. Um, and, well, he was leading an attack wave into, into Pearl Harbor. And in this picture, he looks like somebody just told him he's leading the attack wave. And he's going, wait, 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 what? I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, wait, wait, what? So, you know, you get a lot more of, of the humanity and stuff here. And, it's, and it, is, it is actually fun fitting through the, the, their stories. And like uh, Delano was involved in so many, just just by chance, so mm -hmm. many of the events aboard, like the West Virginia and stuff, uh, during the, that you really, um, yeah, you get a real taste for it. Um, and we have love, we have love dramas, very sad love dramas, like here, uh, Ada and, and Gordon. They're, uh, we're not we're not forcing anything though. This is not this is not. I well, mean, I, much as we love, much as we love Ben Affleck in oh, Pearl yes. Harbor. I mean, much <laughs> as we love that and draw so much inspiration from Ben Affleck in 
Pearl Harbor. It's we don't want to a... just quite rehash that. Is it, we're we're going to take off a little bit of the details and all of the historical accuracy that they put into that film because it's really too much. I mean, they really yeah. get into too it's much detail. Too much detail. Yeah, you know. too much detail. So we're going to take a little bit. Other, other than that, I mean, Ada is Peggy. That's the, the character. Oh, sorry. <laughs> No, but um, what we're saying is we did it, we've done wonders, and now we know exactly how we will be able to write to the template. And if you're a dogfight enthusiast, a nurse enthusiast, a Pacific War enthusiast, nurse or, enthusiast, yes, it well, you that know, could come across like really strange. nurses come as men and women these days. Okay, Astrid, get okay, with the sorry. program. Gosh, <laughs> a nurse has something for everybody. Okay. Thank I cannot you. believe how old school and reactionary you are. People always <laughs> accuse us of different kinds of politics. I never thought it'd be you who would out yourself first. I'm so, so sorry. Andy. Whether you're a nurse nurse enthusiast <laughs> or a dogfight enthusiast <laughs> or a Pacific War enthusiast. Ah, one thing though. You notice episode 10 yeah. is the road to war. But this is after everything's already happened. Stuff now, you would think, oh, the road to war shouldn't that be like the beginning where you talk about the it, because of the Indies Tie Barn um, auction that some of you may have seen. Uh, people were asking me about historians during the live auction, and I referenced uh, Immanuel Kant, who tried to write a universal history in 1784, and Herodotus to to um, to historians. I particularly back to me. <laughs> I particularly admire. Now, Herodotus, though, he he wrote in a sort of circular thing. Like, he would tell the story, and it would always come back to where, so you get the whole, a holistic, it's a very hippie word, you get a holistic, <laughs> a whole holistic feel. So our road to war is actually at the end. Can All you do the, that again for me? A holistic. Um, Thank you. But anyway, <laughs> um, Herodotus, Astrid, <laughs> Spartacus, and Indy are bringing you a Pearl completely Harbor. different way to do Pearl Harbor and do it minute by minute. But to tell the story, it's going to be, it's really going to be exciting. There's cliffhangers, there's hooks. It's been, um, Vika gonna... actually, Vika wrote the hooks and stuff and that was great. Yeah, yeah it was awesome, it. yeah. And, and he's going to be directing it and we're producing it and stuff. But it's it's going to be, I'm really excited about this. Uh, we do not yet have the money for all the archival footage we need, uh, the films and the photos that we wish to use or for the editing for for 10 half an hour episodes and stuff. Um, so what Indy is saying is basically we need your participation to make this project come true. So go right on over to the Time Goes to Army on patreon.com or on timegoes.tv. Sign up on the 1941 or higher tier to support our Pearl Harbor Mega documentary. And, and, and to be clear, that tier of that money goes specifically to the Pearl Harbor documentary. Oh, yeah, it's not just what keeps us surviving on World War II or a time yes. post. Now for something completely different. Hi, everybody. I'm Indy here from Indy's Tie Bar, home of ties, ties, and more ties. And with me today is my lovely assistant, Chantal. Say hi, Chantal, to all the good people. Hi. Now, you're probably wondering what I'm doing here today. See all these packages? Well, we had one of our big Indies tie bar and auctions. I think like some of you could own a piece of history. That's regular history, World War II history, Time Goes history, and Indies tie bar and history. Now, I wrote a, a little personal letter to each and every one of you that, that was kind enough to, uh, to, uh, to purchase one of our ties at auction. And the letters are wonderful, but I put names on the outside of the envelopes. And since my penmanship is as much of a GM atrocity as that one tie that's in here somewhere, which is in fact a GM atrocity, I, I like that word. So, so Astrid is re is redoing the names on the envelope. She's not really Chantal. I was just saying that for a little character effect. So, uh, Astrid's redoing the names on the envelope. You know, this like like Fabian. Fabian's gonna get a, a not much nicer envelope than this. And then we go off to the post office. We go to the post office. We're gonna post all these ties, ties, and more ties. So all of y'all out there, get yourself your ties, your GM atrocity tie, your Soviet Sunday going to meeting tie, and we will have another auction sometime in October. Ain't that right, Mr. Cameraman? That's right. That's right. So sometime in October, we'll be giving you guys updates as that as that uh, as that is about to unfold. So now, through the magic of film, we're gonna cut to us in the post office, all right? Yeah. Some of you 
no G.I. Joe's out there might have noticed that I have the mighty Serengeti tattooed right across the bottom of my goggles. I do. <laughs>